There's a garden Where Jesus is waiting There's a place That is wondrous We are one week removed from the singular most important event in the history of humankind. An earth-shifting, grave-shattering, supernatural demonstrative victory from heaven that sealed the fate of Satan and his demons while simultaneously saving you from your sins before you had ever committed one. This is a prepaid visa. I'm already preaching better than you're shouting. You hadn't even swiped your sin card and he had already paid the bill. Hey! 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 That's why flowing from my heart How could I not be grateful? I'm standing in a life I don't deserve. How could I not be grateful? The blood has covered me from head to toe. How could I not be grateful? Before I ever knew who he was, he was looking for me. How could I not be grateful? When he put my name in the Lamb's book of life, how could I not be grateful? Is there anybody grateful today? Is there anybody grateful today? Is there anybody online grateful today? Hey, 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 hey. There's the first runner of the day, but she's not the last one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I know where you're going. Cause it could have been me. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. John chapter 20. I'm not gonna get through this word today. I'm gonna tell you, tell Nova, I ain't getting through the word today. I, I'm not going to be able, I feel it. I, I feel like God wants his glory today. I just feel like this might be, I just feel like this just might be it right here. I just feel like we ought to just bless him right there. I, I, I just need, I just need a few people that are just walk around. John chapter 20, John chapter 20, John chapter 20, gone now Tim, I ask, you have won again, you have won again, you
Cause millions didn't make it But I was one of the ones who did I look at God and say Millions didn't make it But I was one of the ones I'ma look at God and say that trying to preach I can I can see in my mind's eye my mama in her kitchen right now just waving her hands I know she's just waving her hands somebody ought to wave their hands I know some of y'all too cool for school and forgot how it used to be but oh can we go back to just waving John chapter 20, I'm starting at the 11th verse. Everyone is standing for the reading of the word. Everyone except Mama Sarah, if she don't want to stand, she don't have to. When you're 91, you can do what you want. Everyone else, out of respect for the word, as is the custom in our church, if you would be kind enough to stand. John chapter 20, reading from the New King James Version, the 11th verse. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was him. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Watch this. She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbanai, which is to say teacher. Yeshua said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. I want to preach or teach, share from the subject title, The Gardener. The Gardener. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, speak through your word. Get maximum glory and save souls and heal bodies while you're at it. Also cancel debt in Jesus name, amen. You may be seated. What do you do after resurrection? So much momentum goes towards Easter. 
I don't never hear anybody saying they're going to get a week after Easter suit. Week after Easter hair. Easter is a big deal. People who don't come to church show up on Easter. The crowds will show that. And I don't, I'm not judgmental. People do what they want. But I'm fascinated by the mindset that assumes that God doesn't want to see you any other time of the year. The resurrection is not an event. The resurrection is not a commercial holiday for Easter baskets and eggs and rabbits and candy. The resurrection is the singular event in all of human history that reconnected the eternal state of the soul and put us in right relationship with a God who has been wanting us to walk in intimate fellowship with him and dominion in the earth since the days of the Garden of Eden. And it is this God who still today longs to have deep abiding relationship with you right there where you are. I am in a place in my life where I am all in on this Jesus thing. I'm going to say that again. I'm all in. Is anybody else all in? I need you to type it in the chat feed. I need us to give him an all in praise. Just if you're all the way in. Not hot, not, I mean, not lukewarm. You, you on fire for this thing. We put so much focus on Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, but that same passion and same energy needs to be every Sunday. And not just every Sunday, every day. Because people assume that resurrection is the culminating point when in fact it is the starting point. See, Normally people gear up towards Easter, but Easter needs to be the starting line. Now let us begin. What do you do now that salvation has been secured for you through the blood of Jesus? How should you govern your life now that the grave is empty? How should you praise while two angels sit at the head and the feet of where he laid and said, He's not here. What you crying for? I like him. <laughs> Mary, there are a couple theologians in the room. Mary had seven demons cast out of her. Is that right? Seven of them. Seven. She was the first one to the tomb. This is really important because there are certain people who say women can't preach. <laughs> women shouldn't preach, but she was the first one at the tomb because all the men were scared. <laughs> and isn't it always women that'll go into dead places and try to revive from your sons to your men? Ooh, nobody want to talk about it. Women have a prophetic ability to spot dead things and speak life to them until they get up again. I wish I had some help in here. Some of us had a grandmother that didn't have health insurance, but she had prayer insurance, and she knew how to pray you out of sickness, pray you out of a bad relationship, pray you out of a stupid decision. I wish I had some help in here. Somebody knows there's a woman somebody somewhere that prayed for you, a grandmother, a mother, an auntie. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm fascinated by the, by the misogyny of Christian thought that says a woman can't preach, but she could be the first one at the tomb. A woman can't preach, but, sh but it was five wealthy women that financed Jesus' ministry. 
need some help in here or I'm going to go in another direction. Actually, I'm not. Ain't nothing going to stop me. I'm in the Holy Ghost. In the last days, I'm pouring my spirit. Mary is a conundrum for these deep theologians who say that women have their place in the home or at the kitchen because hers was at the tomb and at the cross. She needed Jesus to get up. Get up. Get up, please. She was there early. The angels were still there which means Jesus had just gotten up. She was there. He said he was going to get up in three days. I need this tomb to be empty. I'm going. And just and if the tomb isn't empty, just give me the body. Just don't take him away because he took seven demons out of me. And see, when he really delivers you, you'll go to wherever he is. I said, well, if he really delivers you, you'll go to where he is. If you really, really got a glimpse of Jesus, you'll go where he is. Oh! That's why some places are emptying out and other places are, it's hard to find a seat because people in this season are going to go to where the real Jesus is. The Bible says that she stood outside the tomb weeping. She thought he was dead. And he meant so much to her because... She had no hope. There are many people who have tried to bastardize this relationship and dishonor the holiness of Jesus by making baseless, non-theological assumptions with no historicity behind them, not a smidge of scriptural authentication, not backed by history, homiletics, or hermeneutics to say that there was some impure connection between Mary and Jesus. But I'm about to put your lying tongue at rest right here, right now. Mary probably was in love with Jesus. We don't know. But if a man cast seven demons out of you and you watch him heal deaf people, blind people, sick people, dead people, he might be a little bit attractive. There are people who think I'm cute because I'm anointed. The anointing is attractive when you are the anointing I'm sure she was attracted to him but this is the power of his integrity he did not take her weakness for him to provide comfort for himself James I feel the Holy Ghost in here my Savior knew her emotional state was fragile, so he maintained an honorable distance in their interaction, even here, one-on-one, -on -one, no one around. She's weeping. She stoops down. It's angels in there. He's not here. He's risen, just as he said. So then she turns around and sees a man. And she says, sir, listen, if you have taken the body of my Lord, just tell me where you've laid him. I'll get him. The Bible says she supposed him to be the gardener. I need you to know that he is the gardener. Just not the way she thought. I'm getting ready to go somewhere with this thing. See, because Jesus was buried in a garden tomb. You rewind to Matthew 26. He agonized over his destiny in the garden of Gethsemane. But we also find him in Genesis at the garden of Eden because all things were made through him and not one thing that was made was made without him including all tangible things, visible or invisible, which means Yeshua was in the garden. He is a gardener. 
And if you really want to know how he deals with gardening, you might want to read John 15. He says, I'm the vine. My father is the vine dresser. Anybody who doesn't produce, he cuts off. But anyone who produces, he prunes so that they can produce more fruit. He's a gardener. I need, you to, I need you to write this down. Jesus is a gardener. He's been planting gardens since the days of Eden. But let me help you. This is going to bless you. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to figure out how to get out of this without shouting. It ain't going to happen. Years ago, when I was a little boy, my mother uh, worked for a state mental hospital, and they had acres of land, and they offered employees the opportunity to farm and to plant gardens on the land. So my mama decided she wanted to plant some tomatoes and uh, I think, I don't know if we planted corn, tomatoes, probably greens, maybe cabbage, squash, things like that. And we had to go out there with these tools and gloves and I hated it. She loved it. I'm the only child. I didn't have a choice. I'm out there in the field. After work, I should have been singing Negro spirituals. I just <laughs> swing low. Gardening is hard work. And this is with fruit that doesn't talk back. We are the only fruit that have the nerve to talk back to the gardener like he doesn't know what he's doing. We're the only fruit that has the nerve to talk to the owner of the garden and say, I don't like where I'm planted. Ooh, my God. Who do you think you are? You're not the vine dresser. You're not even the vine. You're the fruit. I need an eight-second praise break right here. The gardener from the days of Eden, even where God planted was strategic. The Lord God didn't just plant a garden, Chris. The Bible says the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. I asked the Holy Spirit, why? Why did you plant a garden eastward? He said, because the sun rises in the east. It provides the greatest amount of sunlight to nourish the seed. So maximum sunlight means maximum ability to grow and develop and to produce. So it's not just that he planted or what he planted, it's where he planted. And the problem with the body of Christ is we want to plant where we want. That's why we don't see miracle signs and wonders because some of us get offended and we don't want to stay planted. Do you understand there are people who are out of place because of offense? And sometimes the offense is designed to show you something about you that you didn't know. If you can stay through offense, you can grow. Here's the other thing about a garden. If you catch a rotten piece of fruit, get it away from the healthy fruit. Because one rotten piece can make the other healthy fruits get sick. I've been in orchards where I've seen a, 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 an apple and it was healthy everywhere else except where it was touching another rotten piece of fruit. That's why you got to stay away from gossipers. That's why you got to stay away from hateful, vengeful people. Some of y'all don't like people that you've never met because of something somebody else said. You don't even know if it's the truth. Now you've taken on the offense of somebody and now you're missing out on valuable relationship because you took somebody else's offense. Grow up, get delivered, and be your own person. Don't let that rot from one piece of fruit mess up your harvest. I feel a 13-second praise break in here. Hallelujah. 
Somebody shout the gardener. God's been pruning, cutting, developing, processing all of us in multiple ways. We find Mary here post-resurrection, and she's saying, just tell me where you've laid him. She thought he was the gardener, Evan. How do you see Jesus face to face every day? You just saw him die on Friday, and by Sunday, he's unrecognizable. Get this in your notes. Put it in your premium tablet device. Here's how. Because resurrection makes you unrecognizable. That's why there are people who still don't understand how you are this when they knew you as that. They don't even want to receive you. They can't receive you. Even the camera people are waving their hands. There are people who only want to know you before the cross. But something about dying and getting up changes you. And if you don't have spiritual discernment, you won't be able to see me. Some of y'all right in front of people and you're still invisible. You're in relationships with people that are looking at you but can't see you. How many times have you had a conversation and in your mind, you're like, why am I talking to them? You sitting there laughing, eating cheddar biscuits and red lobster like, this is so far beneath me, but I'm going to get this free meal and go home. And God, if you save me, I'll never, ever be at this table again with this human being in my life. Give me another sweet tea. Put a, a no lemon. Take a couple cheddar biscuits home because this is crazy. Why are you wasting time with the people who are looking at you but can't see you? I refuse to live my life spending time with a bunch of people who act like they know my calling, my purpose, my destiny, my pain, and my future and can't see me. They're just there to siphon off my anointing because they can't get their own. She thought he was the gardener because he didn't look like what she remembered. His face, his body had been beaten and bruised to the point that he was unrecognizable. But even with those bruises, she should be able to spot something on him that was familiar. But when you come up out the grave, you do not look the same. That's the power of baptism. Whatever I was on Friday is not what I am on Sunday morning. I need some help in here. Help me preach it like I feel it. Jesus. Hey, Jesus. She thought he was the gardener, and she was wrong, and she was right. He is the gardener. He's been gardening from the beginning, pulling up weeds. You need to thank God he pulled some weeds up out of your life because weeds look nice till they choke your nutrients, till they choke your creativity, till they choke your purpose and your destiny. You need to thank God that he pulled weeds out of your garden. Some of the weeds you planted yourself and wanted them to stay. And God got them out of your house, out of your life, out of your bed, out of your mind, out of your heart, out of your soul, out of your spirit. Somebody needs to thank God that he's a gardener and he will pull the weeds up when you don't have the strength to do it yourself. Somebody ought to bless the Lord in here. He is the gardener. Then she, Jesus says, Mary. And he spoke her name with post-resurrection authority and immediately her eyes were open. What does she do? She runs to him. She grabs him. She clings to him. Hug me. Hold me. Don't let me go. He said, hold on. Don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Then he says this. This is for the people who want to uh, dishonor this relationship. He says, tell, my, tell the brothers, I'm going to your God and my God. Your father and my father. He put her in the sister zone to redirect her affection and her attention.
Mary, don't cling to me. Because in this form, I'm not going to remain. And if you know and study the Old Testament, you have to inspect the sacrifice before it is accepted. And what he was saying is, don't cling to me, Mary, because my father has to inspect the sacrifice before this transaction can be ratified. So I am not yet in a place where you can hold on to me and cling to me because my father needs to examine that I have fulfilled the righteous requirement of the law. I know you want to hold me to where I used to be, but I'm not that anymore. Yeah, I was washing feet on Thursday night, but I'm going to be sitting at the right hand of my father in just a little while. I went from last to first. I need some help in here. Jesus said, don't cling to me now. I was the humble carpenter's son. Now I'm the resurrected king. I got, I got 10,000 upon 10,000 angels who worship at the viewing of me. Don't cling to me in this form. I'm about to get my glory. Then you'll know who it is you've been worshiping. I'm not just resurrected. I'm still the gardener. And from then until right now, Jesus is still pruning, processing, and preparing you. Write it down. Pruning, processing, and preparing. Have you met the gardener yet? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Gardening takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time and a lot of investment and a lot of watering and a lot of pruning and some natural uh, uh, pesticides to keep critters and stuff from eating the harvest or, or killing the food while it's on the vine. We ought to thank the Holy Spirit that he has protected you and kept you safe because you don't have any power to stop devils. Only the Holy Spirit has kept you alive. The blood of Jesus has kept you alive. Jesus, the gardener, has protected the boundaries of your life so that you could grow up, so that you could produce fruit, and not just fruit, but fruit that would remain she supposed him to be the gardener. In another comparative analysis of scripture, you find that Jesus, the cloth that was on his face, was folded and put away in a separate place from the strips of linen that were on his body that were scattered. And some of you may know this and some of you may not, and so I'm going to share it very quickly. But in the Jewish tradition, which is very important, because your savior is Jewish. Study your history. He's a Middle Eastern Palestinian Jew. He's not an American. Even though I see many of my evangelical brothers trying to couch their nationalism with politics. Don't put your Jesus on the truth of my Jesus because the Jesus that men created is so far beneath the truth of who Jesus actually is. Whether white evangelical or black Baptist, don't use your politics to promote your Jesus. Jesus was not an American. It's so prideful to think that he thinks like us. And I have a problem with people who say, well, you know, don't, don't talk about his color, it doesn't matter. Well, if that's the case, how come all these funeral fans have a picture of a white man with brown hair? And how come all these pictures look like a certain particular group when in fact the Bible says his skin was like bronze, his hair was like wool? And nobody wants to talk about that. And it's not about race, it's about truth. And unfortunately, some people have used color 
to try to dominate other cultures with Christianity. And I'm here to tell you that we've got to at least address it so people don't feel like they are on the outside of the Bible looking in. When in fact, the, all of us have been grafted in, whether white, black, Hispanic, Chinese, none of us were invited to the party at the beginning. This was for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But we have been grafted in through faith. So let's take race and identity and politics out of it. Let's get back to this Middle Eastern cross on the hill called Golgotha and let's leave Jesus where he is. I got to go. We have put parameters around who Jesus loves, who he doesn't love, what he believes, what he doesn't believe. That's why we got to preach the word. Listen, the Bible doesn't say what it says. It says what it means. Because if the Bible says what it says, then Satan would have had an ability to have an argument against Jesus because he was quoting scripture. You can quote it and not know it. Because scripture is not words. It's the living word. Capital L, capital W, his name is Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Through him all things were made. That we have people saying what the Bible says, but don't say what it means. That's why you need people who will rightly divide the word. She thought he was the gardener. The tomb is empty. Peter stoops down. He sees the strips of linen that were on his face folded. The napkin was folded, but the linen was chaotic. A folded napkin in Jewish tradition is a symbol. This meal was great. I will return. He folded the napkin to let you know, I'm coming back. I need 17 people to act a fool in here. Get ready, Pastor Lamoris. But I need you to give God a praise. And I want you to give God a praise because he not only died for you, but he folded the napkin to let you know, I'm coming back. He came out of the garden as the first fruit of those who will be resurrected. Hey! Which means if he got up, you can get up. And here's the thing. When you get up, they won't recognize you. Even the people closest to you. Is that John? That's why people, do you know there were people that wanted to see Lazarus killed? Because Jesus raised him from the dead, him living was evidence that Jesus had power over death. There are people who hate that I'm still alive. They thought I was dead a couple years ago. But then God got me out of the grave. Has anybody else ever had resurrection power? You were dead in your sin, dead in your trespass, but he raised you to life. The reason why people hate that you're alive is because they had nothing to do with it. They would celebrate it if they could get the credit for it. But only the gardener can get credit for you. Look at how you have grown. Look at what God has produced. Look at how God has pruned you, prepared you. Look at what God has done in your life. Somebody other than me ought to be great. Look at where you came from. Look at the rest of your family and look at you. Look at what God did. Look why are you alive, but the other ones lost their life? Why are you still here, but somebody else went home early because of cancer? Why are you still here? God is not finished with you. She thought he was the gardener. And she was right. Because he's still producing harvest after harvest. Every Sunday. Every single day, somebody's getting saved somewhere. That's the power of the blood. 
Would you be free from the power of sin? There's power in the blood. There's wonder working power in the blood. The writer said there is power, power, wonder working in the blood. I wish I had some help in here. From Eden to Gethsemane to the garden tomb, our king is a gardener who's still producing harvest. The folded napkin that was on his face, to fold something means to bring it in order, order in the head, strips of linen strewn about all over, order in the head, chaos in the body. We are the body. It was a prophetic declaration that I've done my part. Now the body needs to get in line. What body part connects the head to the body? That's why the church is called to scream repent because repent means to turn. We are here to be the neck that turns the body back to the head. Everyone standing. Turn. Stop sinning. God's been too good. Live holy. Stop being caught up in all this foolish racial identity politics and Christian nationalism that's couched in bad theology. Stop getting caught up in all of these social uh, constructs and conversations. Have your thoughts and your beliefs about everything from abortion to anything else you want to talk about. The truth is, You can't make anybody live your conviction. Do you understand Jesus never talked about politics? They thought he was going to come and give political power. He never addressed it. I know that messes with y'all because y'all want the church to be the place where we talk about everything and everybody. Maybe if we just fed poor people and helped elderly people and took care of people in the community and minded our business and loved our neighbor, maybe we wouldn't have room in a church. Well, pastor, what do you stand for? You know what I stand for. I stand for the word. But I'm a Christian. You can't force somebody to believe what you believe. And on the same way, you can't force me to believe what you believe. Everybody's screaming equity and equality. Equality means my opinion is as valid as yours. You believe that, I believe the truth, and we're going to leave it right there. And I'm not going to be quiet, and so you, gonna, you ain't going to be quiet, and neither am I. But I can promise you, them knees you got, they going to bow. Oh, you will bow. Every... And every shall confess. Planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. The gardener wants you to participate by staying obedient malleable allow him to prune those things that are not fruitful and some of y'all need to be a part of this church because this is home for you pray with me heads bowed Lord Jesus thank you for this day get the glory from this moment prune us as you see fit let us not cling to you pre-resurrection but let us see you as you are post-resurrection in all of your glory. We are just...
the seed. You are the gardener. Water us, prune us, and produce out of us what you will for your glory. It's your soil, it's your son, and we are your servants. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Everybody, give the Lord the greatest praise that you can.